Uh, the first session is going to be a special keynote session, and we're going to have a keynote speaker. It's the incoming uh, CEO of the Wikimedia Foundation, Mariana Iskander, who is going to hold a listening tour. Uh, Mariana, I want to consume your time for the session, and I will let you start. Thank you very much for having me. First, just to say thank you for accommodating me in English. So I appreciate the translation um, support and just very grateful for the opportunity to be here with all of you. Um, I'll introduce myself briefly and then we can get into the session. I'm actually not a keynote speaker because I'm not here to make a speech. I'm here to I hope listen uh, and learn and engage uh, with you about your projects and your communities. Um, I will be joining the Wikimedia Foundation formally in January of 2022. So taking the time now to really participate in events and conversations across the movement. Um, it is a complex world, which you know to learn um, and understand both challenges, opportunities. My background uh, is that I was born in Cairo, Egypt. My family emigrated to the United States. I grew up mostly in the American South in Texas, studied in the United States and in the United Kingdom. And my professional career has um, spanned both the United States and also the African continent I now live in Johannesburg in South Africa, where I've been for the last decade working on the issues of youth unemployment, um, which is as intractable as bringing the sum of all human knowledge uh, to humanity. So very eager to join this um, new community and this uh, new challenge and really looking forward to using the session, as I said, to learn and listen and also to share. So thank you again for having me. Okay, uh, thank you, Mariana. Uh, so I think uh, we can move on to some input from the C communities, something that uh, I think uh, should be interesting enough for you to learn about uh, what are the main activities and projects that uh, have been uh, done in the within the CE region. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, invite uh, a couple of people, exactly two uh, persons, to uh, tell something more about CE Spring, which is an interesting uh, example of uh, joint. Uh, collaboration between OOC communities to write articles on different topics. So I would like to invite uh, Martins and uh, Jericho to join the stage and uh, to uh, describe the project in more detail. Uh, Martins, do you wanna go first? Uh, maybe I guess I go second. Uh, so. Okay, uh, so for uh, those who are not um, familiar with the concept of Sea uh, uh, Spring, it's an annual event that takes uh, uh, place during the three months of spring in uh, Southeastern Europe as a translation competition in between uh, Wikipedia uh, project, pr primarily Wikipedia projects, but also other projects. And it includes um, kind of local competitions in each of these projects that are coordinated on a general level through shared lists of articles, through shared thematic actions, and through shared support team that is uh, kind of coordinating all of these uh, activities. Uh, it is um, focusing primarily on kind of quantity uh, of translations of content uh, that is missing from uh, 
many uh, Wikipedia projects, so articles that are well covered uh, are, are not uh, usually uh, introduced to the lists, uh, but those that uh, need extra exposure. Uh, they are thematically divided uh, in, I think, wide range of topics, uh, I think at least 10, uh, uh, but each uh, country list can include a bit more or less depending on who was creating the list. There is also a general list that is made uh, in kind of collaboration, coordination with uh, everyone that is covering more general topics related to Wikimedia, related to technology, or as of recently related to some topics that are kind of of greater concern for the uh, movement in general. Uh, many countries uh, or many uh, communities, language communities are involved. Uh, there are very few actually that are not uh, i think one of the last ones to join last year or oh, pardon this year were uh, uh, bosnian serbo croatian wikipedia that i know of but maybe martin has better overview who else was joining and i asked two questions yes please uh, I'm interested in whether it's um, repeat people sort of uh, year in, year out, or if you see new people coming. And I'm just curious what, um, what outreach is most effective for these projects and th these communities in terms of people hearing about it or joining? Uh I'm not involved in the project from the very start, but only in recent uh, two years. Yeah. So my, my experience is that some uh, language communities uh, are um, super competitive, and this is like the most prominent activity of the year. Yeah. Uh, in others, it's uh, visible through banner campaign uh, on the Wikipedias but they are kind of joined by a handful of people who are the most enthusiastic over translation efforts. So there is a huge difference depending on the, on the context. And uh, in terms of outreach, um, I know some language communities have a luck of being supported by well-established affiliates. So mm -hmm. there is already a, a kind of working system, how this is done through mailing lists or through on wiki work or through campaigning in uh, other ways in social media or public space or, or doing even in-person events when possible. Uh, for others, it's uh, not as elaborate and it really depends on individuals who are committed to make a difference in their particular uh, community. Thank you. Okay, uh, if you Zelko, are finished, uh, maybe I will take from here with my own perspectives. Uh, I'm Martin from Latvia. Uh, I have been involved with Sea Springs uh, since the start of it. And uh, basically it started actually uh, during one of the C meetings, when we went after the uh, sessions uh, in some, some smaller group uh, at some pub and discussed what, what can we do all together, because uh, this coming together already was a new concept. And, uh, and then actually, yeah, this idea came up to try to make a contest where we write about each other. And um, maybe some of them uh, us didn't believe that it will work, but in the end, actually, it is so that the whole region is participating. Only a few uh, countries or languages are missing. And so that means that, that we have over 30 uh, participating sub-contests. Uh, sub and uh, actually, there are quite, uh, 
I think we are the biggest uh, contest of uh, which is uh, run on the Wikipedia. We uh, this year I think we got fourteen thousand new articles. Last year a bit, even a bit more, and uh, it is really diverse how it happens in each community because as. Uh, said yeah we some uh, some communities like ukrainian uh russian uh, polish uh, communities they are uh, generating a lot of contents and uh, content and uh, there are so many articles uh, for smaller communities like mine it has been like uh, one of the major events of the year mm-hmm. and our numbers also have been uh, rising and uh, especially this uh, support uh, which was offered from uh, bigger affiliates uh, like handling their prizes and all financial stuff because for us and similar communities which have only user group that's a big step to uh, commit to any budgets uh, like yearly budgets or even even uh, some project grants uh, it's it's very complicated and uh, uh, the help from uh, bigger affiliates in the region. Uh, it was one of the major reasons uh, the smaller communities joined it because maybe for some small ones it's the only event of the year where they can where they can actually give some prizes. Uh, and uh, yeah, by uh, this diversity, we uh, this contest is uh, meant uh, mostly for really hardcore editors which create a lot of articles and then we just want to t- uh, steer them towards some uh, specific uh, topics or uh, closing some gender or uh, content gaps uh, that exist but uh, we were surprised when we checked that actually it uh, it welcomes also new users and uh, we tried to create special contest categories so then so that they don't compete against uh, experienced users but uh, yeah we saw some really really good numbers so I have uh, not the from the last year but from one of the previous years when we had la- like 400 participants 53 of them uh, were new new users which registered uh, just before or during the contest so um, and also, it has been great uh, uh, when we consider creating uh, women uh, biographies, and because there are some users who who take uh, this as a challenge, and so uh, of uh, all biographies, it's uh, has been uh, I think uh, thirty to forty percent of the biographies have been. Uh, about women, and that's uh, well above the current number that, that exists. So, I guess I finished my my own uh, view on it. So maybe any questions? Yeah. Well, maybe a, a question you can answer from your perspective. Although I suspect the answer to every question is it depends. So I'll assume that it varies by language, community, country. I'm interested in how the different um, regions are thinking about in-person events for the coming year, or are people continuing to gather virtually, or is it a hybrid? I know that the COVID obviously and travel regulations vary by country and by region, but for this community, what's been happening now and how are you thinking about the new year? Uh, well, I can answer for my own community that, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we we did have a meeting, uh, uh, a live meet, uh, like in in uh, one cafe where we met uh, uh, some part of the community, but it had been uh, quite a long time since we did it. And for us, uh, the online meetings had no, have not been uh, very successful. But I have, what I heard from others that in other countries actually we it uh, made uh, like a, a, some some communities always wanted to try it, and it was a good reason to start uh, it. 
So it really depends from community to community. Yeah, I can say for uh, <laughs> Croatian situation is a bit different because we don't have affiliates, nor we had uh, kind of functional uh, Wikipedia and relations to Wikimedia in 2020. So, uh, yeah, because of this, we also had more freedom to start for the first uh, uh, part of the pandemic or, or for the first summer of pandemic, we were able to do uh, uh, activities. And this also was a follow up of Zoom meetings from uh, CE Spring. So uh, it actually brought few people together to start meeting in person and to start doing uh, workshops and activities. Um, yeah, this year it was um, uh, not so uh, easy situation with, with uh, um, organizing, so we kept it mostly online. Um, I think uh, there haven't been official meetings in person uh, in most of the region of uh, former Yugoslavia. Um, uh, I think the prospect is also not so great because just the vaccination rates here are not uh, as good as, as uh, in many countries in Western Europe and North America. Mm -hmm. I think uh, rates are around 50 to 60 percent maximum. So this is still not uh, advisable. At least not bigger meetings. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if uh, there's nothing more to add uh, on C Spring, are there any questions from the audience? I suppose that most of you know about C Spring, but let's see if someone wants to ask something about this in uh, this occasion. In the meantime, uh, hello everybody. Mm, I noticed that in the chat we have a comment uh, about Ukraine where uh, the community held a major hybrid conference this year, both online and offline, and mo yeah. most people really wanted to meet and see each other offline. Uh, but having an online option was uh, really valuable as well. This is something that we also did in Poland uh, with an online uh, meeting of people, uh, you know, uh, solving puzzles and making a Wikipedia speed run. And after that, an offline uh, meeting in a couple of uh, major cities in Poland. Thank you. I mean, part of the reason I'm asking that is that I've certainly heard in my conversations um, from people all over the world that getting together in person was an important aspect of community in the Wikiverse. And the pandemic has obviously um, made that much harder, yet for some countries, they have found uh, the virtual medium an opportunity for increased access and people were able to participate that had never been able to attend the events in the past. I think I have a hypothesis that learning how to do excellent hybrid events will serve us well in the future because people will want to come together. But if there's a way to continue providing a virtual option for those who can't travel, it feels worth learning. So I've been trying to understand. I spent the morning at Wiki and Daba with um, colleagues from the African communities. And I think um, for them, the hybrid model of some people being able to come and continuing to just increase access. Uh, so I'm just interested in this as a topic of how community will look as people come together. I think the, the varying travel regulations, some parts of the world opening up more than others, I think the issue of vaccination requirements are going to vary. So as with everything, it's complicated and complex, but useful to, to learn. So it would be great to, to hear more, maybe not now, but in the future from those of you who have hosted hybrid events in terms of what's been successful. So thank you for indulging me on that question. 
<laughs> on a general note, even though we are uh, an internet-based, web-based project, uh, we live online as avatars, but we still really <laughs> enjoy seeing one another exactly. in person. It's, it's, exactly. uh, we cannot get enough of one another, at least in the community and the communities, the, the wider C community and the uh, Polish specific community, which I am a part of. We definitely love to see one another live. Yeah. And yeah, as yeah. I said to the, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to say something for, for new uh, uh, people who are just joining uh, the movement. It's also totally different because they don't have these memories yeah. uh, of historic meetings and then seeing the, the usual suspects and, and all of these things. On yeah. contrary, they have uh, felt like, okay, now they actually can commit few hours that normally they wouldn't be able to commit and then to, to uh, join. Uh, but unfortunately, most of the tools that uh, Wikimedians used historically uh, made for successive uh, collaborative processes, not for working on things in real time together, like even no. editing uh, the most simple wiki page together is not an option, which is something that people who are used to Google Docs on similar platforms are just so used to that they cannot imagine why wouldn't you be able to do things together in the same time. And also, yeah, Wikimedia Foundation can definitely advance in what they host or not as services for this kind of work. So, can I ask another question? I don't, I want to be guided, Carol, by you. Yes, please. Um, I mentioned to the conference organizers yesterday that. Um, uh, I've had the privilege of being a visitor to many countries in this region, mostly as a tourist, but a chance to uh, experience um, many of the many of the, the cultures and societies in the region. And certainly, an ongoing theme in the visits that I've had to your countries is concerns about an aging population in general, worried about young people. Where are they? Are they staying? Are they participating? I'm interested in how that translates to our movement and uh, the Wikiverse in terms of, uh, can, are there concerns about aging populations? Are young people finding their way in? If they are, what is attracting them um, would probably be some questions I'd be interested in, in hearing your perspectives on. Uh, I think we need someone from the uh, Czech Wikipedia community. They know that Wikimedia Czech Republic uh, organized a similar uh, program in which they uh, educated people how to edit Wikipedia. I mean, they educated uh, people at uh, later age how to edit Wikipedia. Also, we have uh, Clara. Uh, yeah, hi. Hi. hi nice to meet you. Nice, nice to see you all, guys. It's great to be here. Thank you for organizing. Yeah, the, our senior citizenship program, it's uh, just working and it's been uh, six year now. And we had so far, it's like uh, already hundreds of people who went through the program. I'm especially happy that what worked was like uh, went uh, like transition to online in like past two years and they managed <laughs> even our like uh, seniors managed uh, and uh, now we have a slight um, uh, like um, uh, there's like a, a lower uh, um, uh, sorry uh, less people want to attend uh, now but I think it's the, just the effect of September and that people are just like overcome with all of it that that like brings the after the whole year of of this situation but um, it's amazing we started as as well like alumni club uh, from the people and we already had few lectures who went through our seniors courses on the first place 
So it's amazing. And we, we even have like our first uh, Wikidata seniors and uh, commons uh, lecture for seniors. Uh, we did a senior citi uh, citizen, like, or, sorry, sorry, senior Wiki town every year. And that's uh, so just like yeah, the, this works. Uh, but I, I must say it's uh, highly like uh, uh, thanks to our like em employees <laughs> because uh, it's very much about like effort uh, and I think like uh, welcome and very open um, uh, communication for the seniors. It's it's a long a long story uh, about like meeting them in person as well and just like staying in touch on like different levels with them and just offering uh, just uh, just offering much more than just editing but so far we had like it was i think the three of our like best uh, let's say best <laughs> best editors uh created more, more than 1000 articles so far so that's that's amazing and it's been like hundreds of people who really went through the program and and their stories are just amazing. I don't want to take uh, much longer, but um, yeah, I'm just like happy to uh, to to say this. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, does anyone else want to join something about uh, working with older people? Or younger people. I'm or just younger. interested. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm interested both both sides. Since you mentioned the younger people. Yeah, uh, I know that uh, most of the C communities have uh, quite developed educational programs. So probably that's something that uh, should be mentioned as well. I can share. Okay. Yes, please, Susanna. Mm -hmm. Um, Wikimedia Armenia is uh, almost seven years is organizing wiki camps uh, uh, for, um, uh, in uh, several ages from uh, nine to uh, 15 and from 15 to 18 and also from 18 to uh, 35. Also, we are organizing um, the, um, training for trainers. And uh, we just um, since pandemic we uh, organizing um, teacher trainings and um, uh, not uh, staff is doing this. Uh, we train trainers and uh, we um, last year we have three hundred uh, participants during summer, uh, mostly teachers. That's um, if you have questions about this, please. Okay. Did you? Yeah, thank you, Susanna. That's great to know. Uh, no. Anyone else to add something about the educational program? Yeah, just shortly, we are like on the opposite uh, side of the age spectrum as well. We are uh, we are concent concentrating on the teachers on like basic, but uh, like uh, grammar schools and universities as well. So we have like the programs. We now have like broader offer for the like uh, schools in general. But uh, there are like special program when students write Wikipedia. So like as uh, like their uh, final exams, uh, they just like write the article or, or add some information to the articles. But uh, there's like specific uh, uh, work on, on the like uh, scope of uh, digital, um, uh, digital initiatives in school now and uh, like informational understanding and work with sources. All of this like digital grimace is uh, something that's uh, that's uh, in the like part of our co-work with them. 
So we are referring like uh, we always try to have when we have some editaton, some thematic editaton, we start always to have one open spot for just like students and we offer them like special support according to like the um, uh, lectures from us or like special preparation in be before the editathon just uh, teach teach them how to edit on the first place and then start to cooperate so we already have like uh, the range of schools that we are in touch and regular on the regular basis we offer them some like special uh, thematic usually uh, events for their students and then there's some like uh, let's say uh, evangelization about all Wikipedia uh, so we just like have like the seminars for students what does it mean Wikipedia because there is still lots of people who doesn't know how how this all works so so just just this information uh, in general thank you Clara yeah I, I can maybe say something uh, from the opposite side uh, in Bosnia Herzegovina, I just did yesterday the first presentation to uh, people from uh, the uh, University of Sarajevo who are um, from political sciences uh, media department, who were gathering librarians from from the country to go through um, kind of media literacy and information training, um, and yeah, it was really uh, impressed how they all uh, got 40 librarians to show up for this event and it was for the first time because there were no similar events uh, that at least I could have tracked uh, historically um, so it's like just the first step uh, compared to these long-standing programs uh, there's a huge difference in I've, I've spent time in Sarajevo, so I'm actually quite heartened to hear that because it is a very different context than even all the countries around it, yeah. Yeah, it's it's finally moving a little bit yep. forward. That's impressive, <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's nothing else to add about the education programs and all the lectures about Wikipedia. I think we can also cover another important topic that uh, many uh, C communities uh, are involved in or have been involved in uh, in the past. That's about uh, conducting uh, on-site uh, research expeditions in which people uh, go to visit places that are not uh, covered on the Wikimedia projects with uh, content of any type, like uh, text information, images, uh, or anything else. Uh, I think uh, here we have uh, a right person for that. I invited Tony because uh, he has uh, a years long experience in conducting expeditions. Uh, he has done a lot, uh, so I would uh, leave him to jump in and tell something more about this project. Hi, and uh, nice to meet you, uh, at least online, uh, after, after many years. Uh, so, uh, about Wiki Expeditions, actually, we started on this kind of conference, the meeting in Belgrade, 2014, which was my first international Wikipedia conference. And I heard uh, about uh, uh, some presentation from our uh, from our colleagues in Poland, and they uh, they present the, about their, their present, about uh, uh, their project, and uh, uh, in, it was very interesting to me that uh, to visit some places that are mostly forgotten, uh, that uh, even uh, not the country authorities uh, make an effort uh, to. Uh, to, to have images or to, to have documentation about those places. And uh, I, uh, it was my desire that uh, uh, to have that in, uh, in Macedonia. So uh, back in 2015, we started our project uh, uh, in our country. Uh, and we follow example uh, from our colleagues in Ukraine, in Estonia, 
um, in the Poland, Czech Republic. So it was like uh, we started and we still is still going on in uh, in our country. Uh, we uh, covered almost 700 villages, uh, which is almost 40 percent of our uh, total villages in our country. Uh, it is nice to meet older people, which was uh, uh, context in our previous uh, discussion, uh, to to see their perspective. Um, uh, and we have many uh, like uh, situations when they ask uh, why uh, uh, for what uh, for, for what entity you you doing this, uh, and uh, it is very really hard to explain them. It is like and I, I always com uh, I always explain them that we did it uh, then and uh, uh, we took the images of uh, their uh, village and we write the legends or something like that uh, uh, origin of the of the name and I explain them that it is like basically like uh, encyclopedia that they have in the past and this is uh, in the hard copy but now it is somewhere in, on the internet and uh, it is and it's uh, electronically so and I show up on my phone and it's like that because they they never heard of, uh, many times they, they never heard of uh, Wikipedia and uh, it's like uh, you basically tell them at first point as first step so it is uh, for me it is nice project and it's still ongoing I love when we are doing this research, uh, doing this uh, local content, because mostly that uh, content is only accessible on uh, Macedonian Wikipedia. And thanks to Wikidata, actually, it is uh, accessible afterwards uh, on other uh, languages, uh, at least to see quantified uh, data about what, uh, where is the churches, where the uh, rivers, schools, and, on, uh, and like that. So if we have <laughs> any questions. No, that's quite remarkable. I think there's maybe a uninformed stereotype that most of this work happens in urban cities. Um, and so it's useful and interesting to hear about outreach activities that are outside of big cities and metros. Yeah, basically we visit like uh, forgotten villages. It's like yeah. never, uh, I think uh, you can imagine like you see the road, but it's unpaved, it's, un it's never uh, like it's with the villages with only zero or one inhabitant. It's, it's, it's hard, but mm -hmm. I think it's, it's good to, to have that base. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Mm, is there anyone else who wants to add something about uh, the week expeditions in uh, the other sea countries? I know that this is a project uh, which uh, takes place in many other countries with different uh, geographical uh, terrains uh, reliefs, so it's not the same in uh, every country. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, we have uh, some expeditions also. We do this uh, from uh, 2011, and it's a uh, very nice project. Uh, we do it in many formats, and uh, I think it's uh, very nice because I uh, we can. Uh, uh, we can cover uh, many uh, a, a, lot, a lot of places, uh, even uh, uh, not uh, well known places, uh, and uh, uh, also as I see, uh, I did a lot of pictures for, from uh, uh, that time, and uh, I see that uh, many uh, media uh, use them, and uh, that's good, I think. So please, uh, other countries who didn't do this before, please join us.
Thank you, Victor. Uh, it was a great insight from uh, Ukraine on the Wiki Expeditions. Yeah. Are there any questions? I, I don't see any raised uh, hands. So people seem to be shy in raising hands to ask questions. Uh, I, I, I always have more questions, so I'll be guided if. Okay, are there any questions that uh, you have uh, to Mariana so that she answers? Hmm. Oh, just listening and interested. Uh, thanks, Ian Barks oh. in the chat. Okay, that's nice. I mean, uh, we discussed a lot in this session and we still have 13 minutes until the end. Oh, we have a raised uh, hand by Jayko. Okay, Jayko, go ahead. Yeah, there may be one question that is uh, a little bit early to ask, but mm -hmm. uh, is, it, uh, is there already something that you notice that would translate well from your previous experience of working with uh, youth unemployment uh, into practices of getting people from underprivileged communities to to join in bigger numbers and support them uh, because usually Wikipedia and Wikimedia work is considered primarily as a voluntary hobby and then some people manage to make it uh, part of their profession or partly or, or some somewhat some even fully professional uh is there a way that you can think uh your previous experience can translate mm -hmm. in kind of bridging these gaps because this yeah. polarity of being professional and being a hobbyist is also polarity in between being privileged and being underprivileged yeah. that is huge it, i mean thank you for asking that it's an excellent question because i have been on the one hand, trying to learn the experiences of all of the regions. So, so I've tried to cover all the regions in the world, but obviously I live uh, on the African continent. And I can tell you from my work here, I mean, no young person is on a desktop. I mean, it's just not something that is part of their day-to-day -day life. If it's not on the phone, it's not happening. And I think that the, you know, our reality um, is that the cost of data is so high that assuming somebody is um, on the internet all day, every day is a, a bad assumption. And at the lower end, and again, the world is complicated, so, you know, we can work out what the segmentation is, but some of the young people that, that 